This is Joe Corbliss. I'm here at Yonkers City Hall with the Yonkers Voice. We are interviewing today Mayor Mike Spano. Yeah, hi, to my left is Mayor Mike Spano of Yonkers. Welcome, Mayor. Thank you for taking the time with us today. Just want to say that the Yonkers Voice is the voice of the people, and we have some questions here today that come directly from the public. Uh, we appreciate that you're open and able to help us and try to answer the public's questions. So sure. thank you. Okay, let, let me start off with uh, Thomas's statement, uh, if you mind comment on this. He says the casino is going to stop the constant finance issues in the school budget, but there's still shortfalls again this year. Will you be the mayor to correct this once and for all, and somehow, some way? The story seems to be getting repeated over and over. Yeah, sorry. the story of funding and educational, the funding of education in the office has been a story that's been if you look at go back in the newspapers, if I go back maybe 50, 60 years, and uh, we all know that the school formula does not treat Yonkers adequately because of our proximity, because of our proximity to New York City, because we are in Westchester County, and, uh, and there are issues that 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 um, the formula really doesn't address, and especially when you look at the fact that, uh, that over 70 percent of our kids are on some form of subsidized lunch program it means that they live at a below the rate of poverty. Poverty is, is the main issue and, and something that needs to be addressed uh, statewide and nationally, frankly. Uh, we have been pushing for that. Uh, the race way, which is the question, uh, is, is one way of funding education. Um, one of the things that I did when I was in the state capital, number one, I pushed for those video lottery terminals. Uh, I was actually the first legislator to come out with that idea. Uh, and. I was one of the three legislators that came out with that idea. And Gannett newspaper said at the time it was a bad idea. And they, we had said, let's take that money and let's take that money and target it back to education. But then we said, let's take uh, money for the community, uh, called host community money, and target that money back to education. So far, uh, Yonkers have been getting about $20 million a year just in what they call host community aid. Um, it doesn't fill the budget gap, uh, but it's certainly a, a start. And what we need to do is, uh, what people don't realize is that uh, how that money is distributed is determined by the state legislature and the governor. So um, we have to go back again to Albany, like we did this year, and ask uh, the, the state legislature, our delegation, the governor, can you redo the formula for the racetracks, especially as it pertains to what they call host community aid, and give Yonkers a few more bucks, and uh, that's something we're fighting for each and every year. And uh, and but it, but it's not a decision that a mayor or a city council can make. It's a decision only the state legislature can make, and that's why we have to we have to uh, go at them. All right. So I have a question here uh, from Anna. She says. Can we open up more recreation centers for kids? Not everybody wants to do karate or play ball. Coming up, we had a place to go uh, to our parents came home from work and for everything. Pool tables, hockey, ping pong, loads of games, a PAL type of place. Uh, you know, but is there more of this in the works and, uh, you know, what is happening in recreation center wise? Yeah, one of the things that we've been able to do over the last couple of years uh, in keeping our parks budget whole uh, was to allow for the, the programs that, cur that we currently run and operate, um, whether it be having a uh, condor and the swimming pools uh, in operation, uh, having our different centers run, but not just for seniors, but also for our kids. Uh, keeping our parks clean, we've been able to, uh, in running a good government, we're able to keep those programs from being cut. Uh, we like to build some more community centers because I think that would uh, really help out and give our kids a place to go. One of the things that we're working on, working on with Carzo Pineda right now uh, at West Ham is the conversion of the old Day Spring Church on Elm Street, which we converted uh, into, a, uh, into a community center. That's a, a multi-million dollar job. It's uh, being done with private funds and government funds. The city's committed already a uh, million dollars to the project, and we expect to see um, some action on that very, very soon. So 
Uh, so yes, we're committed to building uh, places for our young people to do because we to go because we all know that if uh, if there's nothing for them, mm -hmm. clearly uh, you know they're gonna they'll do probably you know do something maybe they shouldn't do. So we want to be able to to offer programs. So the other program that we did recently and, and you'll hear more about it uh, is we actually partnered up with. The, our college, uh, Sarah Lawrence College, in, in running the soccer program. As a matter of fact, I think sometime this week, Sarah Lawrence College and, and their soccer their soccer players uh, will be offering a free clinic to, uh, I think it's two to nine year olds, uh, to, to learn soccer. They're going to be doing it up in Nodi Hill. They're actually going to be playing soccer. Sarah Lawrence, their team, uh, is going to play soccer under the lights in uh, in Nodine Hill. And uh, again, it's, it's, it's about, yes, Sarah Lawrence, which is long, long, for far too long, been associated with Bronxville, mm -hmm. is a Yonkers college, being associated with Yonkers, our community. We're proud of that. Uh, being now part of our community by training our kids and also uh, taking Yonkers and, put, and running the Yonkers banner with their name and saying, you know what? This is where we play. This is where our professional, where our college collegiate games, rather, will be played right here in Yonkers on Odai Hill. So uh, we did that a couple of months ago. We made that announcement. We didn't get a lot of press attention, mm -hmm. uh, considering I think it was pretty significant that they've actually made that change and that they're doing that. Uh, but, uh, but people will see that in the next couple of weeks. Okay. Next question is, how many jobs have been created for low-income men in Yonkers? With all the past and recent construction jobs that have been going on, and I do mean real long-term jobs, not minimal, menial jobs. Yeah, it's, it's hard to quantify what the exact number of jobs are as pertains to different, um, uh, different economic numbers. Uh, I can tell you just by the, the uh, New York State puts out uh, their own statistics on jobs and job growth. Uh, and those are the, those are the numbers we go by. You know, four years ago, uh, unemployment rate was 9.1 percent in Yonkers. Uh, today, the recent uh, recent uh, uh, numbers today are 5.7. That we're at 5.7 percent unemployment in Yonkers. Uh, that's uh, the lowest of all Big Five districts. And I say the Big Five. Uh, the Big Five are. New York City, Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, and Yonkers. Uh, we're the lowest of the big five, and, uh, and that's a, a pretty good number. Um, you know, we're not obviously going to be happy. We'll rest until we have full unemployment. Uh, and certainly, we want to make sure that, uh, that the jobs are, are good quality paying jobs as well. Um, and that's something we fight for each and every day, and we think that we're getting there. You know, there's a lot of economic activity in Yonkers. Uh, we have a little over a billion dollars in economic activity going on right now uh, with new developments across the entire span of the city. We're, we're proud of that. Okay. This next uh, question or statement comes from Ruben. He says, when it comes to city jobs, favoritism is what's happening for years. Family members, friends, all favoritism. How can we change this? Because it's not fair to the people who have been applying for years, and the ones that get chosen are people who know someone. There's a big problem that's been ignored for years. Not one politician seems to be doing anything about it. Uh, wh what can we look for to change this? Well, there, there are, you're basically talking about two different types of jobs. You're talking about um, jobs that are, let's say, part of the administration. There are probably, um, I don't know, it's a handful of jobs, maybe 10 or 15 jobs that are part of the hierarchy of the government, right? Um, that is, those are positions that are picked directly by the mayor. Um, you know, I pick, um, I try to pick the best and the brightest people um, and, and put them in positions I think they can, they can handle. Uh, the bulk of our jobs, so the bulk of our workforce, which is, you know, uh, several thousand people, uh, are, are picked by test, um, so civil service exams. So, um, whether, so if you're a police officer, you know, you have to achieve a certain um, number on a test, and you can only pick from the top three. Uh, same thing with the fire department and so forth and so on. So 
it's hard to um, it's hard to to say that you know you're just picking friends and relatives. I don't think that's I don't think that's the case. And though I think a lot of people like to say that, but I don't think that's the case. And uh, but we but I think that I have a pretty good record for um, hiring a diverse administration. I probably have the most diverse administration of any mayor that I can ever remember. Um, I have um, uh, Latinos, I have uh, African Americans uh, in, in commissioner level positions. Uh, and and uh, in our last couple of classes, whether it be firefighters or, or, or police officers, have been about 30% uh, minority representation in those classes. Uh, that's a, a, a welcome change, I think, to, to the way business has been done in the past, and, and we hope to grow on it and to build on that. Okay. Next one's from Thomas. He says, Mr. Mayor, please add patrol offers to walk the area of Getty Square, Riverfront, Yonkers Station, Library, and such. Thank you in advance. We are the people who work, live, shop, and commute in this area. We, we have put 10 new police officers in this budget. Uh, we have already uh, put in place foot patrol uh, down in Getty Square, and we're doing that right now. Um, we have uh, put an enormous amount of resources into Getty Square, both for in terms of economic development, but in terms of safety. Uh, and but but we do I do hear you about the foot post. Uh, we have that now, and we also have another additional car there. And we have some undercover happening at this point. You know. 99% of the people, whether it be Elm Street or Linden Street or um, any of the tree streets for that matter, or uh, Main Street, uh, Riverdale Avenue, you know, uh, the individuals that live there are good law abiding citizens. Um, what our job as, as uh, the people who are um, working with our police departments is to make sure we protect them so that uh, the 1% the, the of, of, of those who might want to go cause a ruckus in the community aren't given the ability to do that. And so that's why we have acted pretty swiftly uh, and we have really went after those who would uh, cause a problem in the community. Um, recent spike has been unfortunate, uh, but overall I think we've been doing uh, a good job of bringing crime down. We have a lot more work to do. Uh, I think the work, the job of of fighting crimes is, is never done for a big city, but you, but you, but it's something you have to keep on, and it's something that uh, we have to remember. That again, you know, I, mean, I, I, I walked the community just last night. Uh, these these are good people, and they want to be able to just walk to the corner store with their families and buy an ice cream, and they should be able to do that without someone, uh, you know, sticking them up for money or or or, or what have you. And so. Um, that's what we're working towards. Okay. Next question comes about, uh, does Yonkers comply with New York State mandates? For example, how does, uh, there's three fire department supervisors that are supposed to be on the 911 dispatch, uh, and, and how many police uh, dispatchers are there as well? Well, that's a good question, and I, I don't know the answer to that question, but I can find out for you. Um, my, uh, my assumption is that we are comp compliant. No mm -hmm. one's ever told us that we're not, mm -hmm. and uh, but that's certainly a good question for the for the fire commissioner. I'll find out for you. Okay. Right, Next question is uh, if you would be open to an outside agencies periodically monitoring Yonkers to see if the city is in compliance with uh, all of its regulations. Um, it says, Mayor Spano, there is a big transparency uh, and we'd like to, you know, get this kind of clarified. In other words, to have open to be agencies look outside of the city themselves to see that they comply with the state regulations on all four. We, we are probably the most monitored big city out uh, in, in New York State. Um, mostly because of the city's financial past. You know, when the city had two control boards, uh, they, they created the, uh, the Fiscal Agent Act. Uh, the Fiscal Agent Act helped the city of Yonkers 
to, um, um, to uh, what they call general accounting principles. Um, it's a very strict way of, of us managing our budget. So strict, it's stricter than the New York State. New York State doesn't have to follow general accounting principles, but Yonkers does. And, and so uh, our budget um, is, is now reviewed uh, before, before we, after the council passes it, uh, the budget is now reviewed not just by the state controller as part of the Fiscal Agent Act, but also is reviewed by the Department of Education, and they have to approve our budget. So we have quite a few eyes on us, and that's okay. We don't mind transparency. Transparency is a good thing, and and we um, have to provide them with reports, annual reports, quarterly reports. Uh, that they are. We, we do more than any other municipality does in the entire state. I'm okay with that because um, as a result of our fiscal practices, um, we've gone from uh, a, a city that had bond rating that was hovering near junk bond status mm -hmm. to now a, an A-rated bond. You know, uh, and people ask me, well, what's so important about an A-rated bond? Well, an A-rated bond means that the standard and poor's and and Moody's have now looked at the city's finances and they've looked at the way we operate and they said, you know, you should be an A-rated bond. If you're an A-rated bond, you can then go to the lenders and they will actually compete. They will actually compete for, uh, in, for lower interest rates to buy those bonds, hence making money for the city because we would have lower interest rates. Um, that's, that has never happened. Uh, that didn't happen in over 30 years, and now we've been we've been A-rated for the past two years, and so we're excited about that, and we think that that's a major accomplishment. Okay, this uh, seems to always kind of come up uh, the issue of parking tickets in Yonkers and, mm -hmm. and their expense compared to the other cities in in Westchester County. Yeah, yeah, they are expensive, and and, and maybe that's something we should talk about. Um, but I, I also and I, I hate to sound callous, you know, it's kind of like when, when people um, occasionally come to me and I, my own sisters will come to me and say to me, you know, that I, I, I get a red light camera ticket. And I'd say, well, if you can show me that you didn't pass the light, then, you know, I'm willing to do something, you know. That don't sound, don't sound harsh, but you pass the light and it's, it's every single time. No matter who's coming to me, they had passed that light. They ended up with a fifty dollar ticket. Um, it's a quarter. It's a quarter. You put a quarter in in, in the uh, in the meter, and and you and obviously uh, you don't get a ticket. And I think that's one of the things that I like to encourage people to do is that there are revenues mm -hmm. that are that are generated to the parking authority in the city which provide for services to keep our parking lots clean, to keep our community safe. And um, for those who um, think that's okay just not to pay, well, it's, it's not okay. Um, but we could probably, you know, talk with the city council about, you know, ways to maybe, um, to give better opportunities. And let me tell you why. What White Plains does, if you don't pay your parking meter, and you get a ticket. Well, if you go that day mm -hmm. and pay that ticket, right. you don't have to pay the fine, the big fine. You pay just what you would have paid for the debt. Mm -hmm. I'd be open to doing that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's one way to really curb the cost. Uh, but there's an infrastructure that has to be put in place um, that we are now in the process of working on. Don't forget, the parking authority, when I inherited it, uh, was in the red over 250000 a year. Now, for the first year, they're probably going to be in the black. Why? Because we have went after the abuses systematically. There's a lot of abuses uh, and, and, and in an effort to change the way they do business. We would, this, this parking garage here, uh, people were sharing their, their, their passes and you know, it was costing the taxpayers 5000 a month. Just this one garage. Mm -hmm. You know, you do the math, 5000 times 12. And that tells you what we were losing. So uh, we had to make some changes. I'd be for reforming it, reducing that number, but it has to be in a in a global environment so that, uh, like I said, if somebody gets a ticket on that day, they can go down to the store here and pay 
but they would have paid just for the day. Mm -hmm. If somebody who doesn't want to do that, well, then they'll get hit with a fine. So in conclusion, Mayor, I want to thank you for your time, but one final thing. Uh, look back on your campaign promises and, you know, let the people know what you think you've done well and what still needs to be done here in Yonkers, okay. if you can. I will do that. Thank you. Oh, you want me to do that right now? Okay. <laughs> Just, no, I, you know, when I, when, I, when I came, when I became mayor, one of the things I said was we would, um, limit the drama the best we can. Mm -hmm. uh, we would not scare our workforce uh, any longer. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, as you know, the last couple budgets, while there were tough budgets, we didn't scare the workforce. I never once said we were laying off 200 people. What I, what I would say is we have our work to do, we have to advocate, and then we have to find funding sources. And we were able to find funding sources out of Albany, we were able to establish some local funding sources to deal with our Board of Education. During my time here, there has been no cuts to education. And we've actually increased the amount of money we've been in education every year for the past three years. We've consolidated uh, five different departments within the Board of Education. Again, liberating another $10 million so that the school district did not have to uh, close out programs. Again, this year, we're going to have full day pre-K. So we're building upon our success each and every year. We know we're a big city. You know, we have limitations, the taxpayers are squeezed, we can't fix what ills us overnight. But what we can do is incrementally repair and grow and move forward each and every day. And that's what we've been doing. Uh, economically, you know what, I, I think that's probably our, our best accomplishment so far. You can go to different sectors of the city, just drive around, whether it be the waterfront, whether it be Tuckahoe Road, uh, go different parts of the city. For the old boys Thompson, you will see economic development. You'll see investments being made in our community, uh, and, and that's and that's been positive. Uh, people say nice things about Yonkers, and and they and people aren't afraid to say they live in Yonkers anymore. That's a positive thing. And we want that. I want people to say, "Where do you live, Yonkers?" I don't want people to say, "I live in Westchester County or Lower Westchester or something other than that." Be proud of your, your city. Be proud of where you live and be proud to say it, and, and people are. Lar uh, Sarah Lawrence College is now proud to say they're a, a college based in Yonkers. That says something. And so I think if I had to talk about an accomplishment, accomplishment is changing the Yonkers speak to a positive, changing, eliminating at least a crisis to taking crisis and actually turning it into advoc advocacy and getting results. Uh, it's, it's going out there and moving our city forward economically. And if I, if you had to say what I haven't accomplished yet, well, I will tell you this: we still have a long road ahead. We're not going to be happy till our schools are fixed. We're not going to be happy until we don't have crime, and we're not going to be happy until uh, you know there is good quality, affordable housing in our community with good jobs. So when economic, when people come in and invest dollars, that the people who live here be able to, to take part in that economic prosperity. So we want to make sure that, that these are the things that I'd like to see us continue. Mayor, in terms of your political future here, are, are you planning re-election? Yeah, I, I totally plan on running for re-election and we're going to make uh, our official announcement in September. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much.